Hello everybody, welcome back. We are in the kitchen today. Sorry for the little line there, I don't know what it is. It's showing up on cam, but not when I look at it. So, who knows. Today I want to make another burger. You know me, I love my pizza, I love my burgers, I love my comfort food. And I love taking what you go out and get in fast food joints and making it at home. Because a lot of the times you can make it at home a lot cheaper and a lot better because, well, you can make it how you want it. I'm just going to turn the fan on a bit. Better than what they make it, of course. You can season it how you want. You can top it how you want. You can do whatever you want. So this is... Well, it's not a copycat. It is fairly close to Wendy's Baconator. Oh yeah. We are gonna do the square patties. We're gonna do the whole nine yards. I couldn't get the same buns that they use. So I, whoops, I have just some nice hamburger buns. Next to me, I do have my fry pan. We'll show you all this as we get to that. But I'm just putting the pans uh, face down or opened so to speak so like this in the pan so that they get a little toast on them just like they do in the store in the restaurant this way they've got that toast in the middle on the middle but they aren't toasted on the outside because that's how they do it they only toast one side of the bread and they do that so all the toppings don't seep into the bread although <laughs> To be perfectly honest, I've always found the buns fall apart regardless. So what I have here is just a pound of regular hamburger meat. I went like Wendy's, got fresh, never frozen, as they say. Uh, and from friends who have worked there in the past, it is true, but they get it fresh. It doesn't mean the people they're getting it from didn't have it frozen. So there is a play in words there. <laughs> now to make the square patties, there's all kinds of ways you can do it. I'm gonna do it a real quick, simple, easy way. We're gonna swap the camera around so it's not on me so you can see what I'm doing down here. And let's check this bun because there's a big difference between toasted and burnt. So give me a sec, let's change this camera around and let's show you what to do. So there we are. We have our one pound of hamburger meat. I have it just on a small cookie sheet. I have some parchment down, it'll just make it easier at the end to get everything off. Again, I'm just checking my buns off to the side because no one wants burnt buns. And real simple, all I'm going to do is squish this out. And you can see I haven't added any seasoning or anything to it yet. I'm going to push it so that it's equal. So that's level with everything and level with the side of the pen. Because that's going to give me about the same thickness as the Wendy's Burger. So, nothing hard, nothing difficult. All we're doing here is squishing some hamburger meat. There we go. Really hard so far, right? <laughs> Just wiping my hands. Next, we're gonna obviously season this a little bit. And we're just going here for some salt. Probably more salt than you think you need. This is fast food after all. 
again, give a quick bun check. They do put, because they have like a seasoning pack that they sprinkle on their burgers. Well, I don't have the seasoning pack, but I do know there's salt, garlic salt, some black pepper, which I have here somewhere. Right now, you guys are all hanging out in my spice cabinet. Makes a good impromptu camera stand. So there's some pepper. And like I said, all these seasonings, like, I'm not giving you exact amounts because you're sprinkling it over the meat. You want a fair coverage. And you can change these however you like. You don't want as much salt. Put a bit less, but don't cut it out altogether. You do need that salt. It does add a lot of flavor. Same thing with the garlic salt. You can use regular um, garlic powder if you want, or if you want, you can even use a little bit of onion powder. Normally I do, it's just right now I'm out. And when I went to the store today, those of you in the Discord know, well, that was a mess. The stores were empty, the overstock crew hadn't come in the night before, so I was happy even just to find the hamburger and the bread for this video. Next, I have just some whoop, cayenne pepper. This is something I like to add. It is not one of Wendy's seasonings. And just a very light coating. It's not going to add a ton of heat, but it will bring a lot of flavor. Next, to make the actual square burgers. Okay, our buns are finally starting to toast a little bit. So we're gonna cut this roughly into four. We're actually pretty close into four. Another reason for that parchment paper, it just makes it a bit easier. And I don't have to worry so much about cutting my cookie sheet. And we're gonna cut these now in half. So we had a pound of hamburger meat. We've cut it into four, so needless to say, our burgers are well a quarter pound each. So our bun is getting a little crispy there, so that's fine. And we're gonna cook this for a change just in a uh, non-stick skillet. It's the closest thing I have that simulates a grill. And right now also, I'm in the process of recoating or re-seasoning my cast iron. So it's a little bit hard to do that now. So I've got one bun there, nicely quickly toasted. We're gonna get the other one toasted. Now on a Baconator, of course you have the cheese. Normally I would use a real cheddar or some Swiss cheese. Gotta love Swiss on a burger. Even some mozzarella, you can use whatever cheese you like. But I'm trying to keep this as close to a real Wendy's Baconator. Got some ketchup, the red stuff. I've got some dill pickle slices off to the side. The only thing I'm not putting on is mayonnaise because to me, mayonnaise on a burger, it's adding fat to an already fatty burger. If you're adding mayonnaise because, well, you need the flavor, it's because your burger wasn't seasoned properly in the first place. So my second bun here is almost done. And for the bacon, Wendy's does not cook bacon to order. They do like so many other places, they use pre-cooked or ready cooked ba bacon, and that's what I'm doing too. Whoop. We're just using some real simple pre-cooked <laughs> bacon. It's quick, it's easy, and you know what? This stuff actually tastes pretty good. So we're just gonna fight get this open because they never make it easy so my buns I know it's kind of hard but it's, are both lightly toasted and we're gonna get our first two burgers in the fry pan I don't have any oil in these but you can hear that sizzle
And again, we're just gonna quickly pause the camera so we can move stuff around and show you these burgers cooking. So we have our two burgers in there. Sorry, it's not a better view, but we're still working on finding a tripod that can hold a tablet properly. So we're doing a little bit of a balancing act here. So these are gonna be some simple grilled hamburgers. Now comes the fun, of course, of opening these packs of plastic cheese. I don't care how long this has been in the fridge or stuff like that. It always feels somewhat melted when you first take it, when you start to unwrap them. I think the only way to fix that would be to keep them in the freezer. But who wants to eat frozen? Places. I realized I'm making two burgers here, so I need four slices of cheese. Kind of open these so they don't all fall apart on me. Easier said than done sometimes. There we go. Now comes time for that first flip. And the only flip we're gonna do. And you'll notice I didn't put any oil or anything in the pan to start off with because we don't need it. There's enough fat and everything in the hamburger meat. Why do we need to add more? we we'll also get some of my bacon ready here. You just had a little money walking around. So, because these patties are thin, and I said they're like less than really, they're less than a quarter inch. The shakes are nothing sticks, but look how good that looks too. I'm also trying to be careful no fat or anything splashes up on the screen. They cook really fast. And just give them a little poke. And when they start feeling, feeling firm to the touch, you know they're cooked on both sides. These are also, when they come off the, off the pan here, they are going to rest for a few minutes. Because we have the other two to cook. While that's in there as well, we'll throw in a little bit of our bacon. This you can heat up in the microwave as, as if you want, but I like doing it in the pan because it just adds a bit more flavor. You just give them a little squeeze. So in a way, these are kind of like a smash burger because they do get pressed a bit. You do that so they don't bubble up or anything. And also, it just helps get that nice crust like you see here on the edge. Now that bacon really doesn't take long at all. It's already cooked. We're just warming this up. There are times I really think even like Wendy's doesn't heat it up again. That's the other thing I like about doing these at home. I know everything's hot. I know everything is cooked fresh because, well... I'm cooking it as we do this. We're doing all this in real time. We just stop the camera a couple of seconds there so we can move it around. And all this first layer is done. 
So what we're going to do again is we're going to pause this. We're going to move the camera around and you can see the assembly. So we just moved our camera around. You can see we have our two lightly toasted buns. We're going to take our first patty. Put it down. Piece of cheese. They always put it on an angle like that. And that's so you can see the cheese. Oops. We have our bacon. Again, it's normally crossed so that it sticks out and makes it look like you have a lot more. We have our second patty. So you can kind of see how they make it look a lot more than it is by how stuff hangs off and all that fun things. Our next little piece of bacon goes on. And really, that's it. But like I say, there is ketchup, there is everything else that goes on here. We're going to do that once I have the second burger cooked. So we are going to take a pause here now while I get the other one cooked, and then we'll come back, we'll do the dressing, and we'll show you how good this tastes. We'll see you all in a second. Okay, so we are back. As you see, we dressed the first one. Yes, I have the bacon sitting on the bun of the second one. We'll do a little bit better view of the assembly here. So you just take... Your first patty goes down. And cheese, of course. Always on that angle. Turn the heat off. The first few pieces of bacon. Because they do say you get two strips of bacon per patty. The next burger. I didn't realize when I cook, cut these, some were a bit bigger, but oh well. Cheese again, more bacon. This guy's getting an extra piece just cause I feel lucky. We've got our pickles. And of course, our ketchup. I'm being a little bit more careful with my ketchup. Most of the time, theirs doesn't even seem to be on the burger, it's more in the paper. Oop, I don't know if you hear that in the background. First load of laundry is done. But as you can see, holy cow, those are big. We have our Baconators. Those look so good. Let's close one up and take a bite. Okay. We had to stop and take the thumbnail pic, of course, but just look at that. Forget the mayo that they normally put on it. This is just, well, hmm. need more info <laughs> it's juicier than theirs wow immediately just like theirs you get that saltiness but at the same time you can taste it, the garlic powder this pepper you can taste that little hint of cayenne it's not hot helps to bring up other flavors and a lot of the time spices will do that they act as a flavor enhancement not a flavor of their own of course tasting that cheese and all that bacon oh my god i kind of wish i had the right bun but this is a close enough this one is falling apart already just like theirs are this is so good you saw how quick we did it, how easy it was. I hope you try it yourself. Take the Baconator for a spin yourself and change it around. They always have that mushroom Swiss burger. 
Now, for me, that's not going to happen. I can't eat mushrooms, but take a Baconator concept, add sautéed mushrooms to that. Oh, I'm sure that would be good because bacon and mushrooms together, do that with the Swiss cheese. Incredible. I am going to go enjoy my lunch. I'm going to edit this video to share it with you all and spend the rest of my afternoon. We have a nice sunny day for a change. So I want to thank everyone for stopping by. If you are new to the channel, please remember, hit that subscribe button. The more people who do, the more I see people like the videos I'm creating, and it makes me want to make more of these great videos for you. Today was a simple copycat, real easy recipe. Sometimes they're a little bit more. I do have lots of other plans, including one that'll tickle your sweet tooth coming up very soon. If you're coming back to the channel, well, thank you. I'm glad to see you again. It's always nice to see people coming back. Please leave me a comment down below. Let me know if this is something you like. Do you like these styles of videos? I just realized I have an ironing board behind me. I don't know why I don't iron anything. Maybe that's from another video, who knows? Leave me a comment down below. Let me know if you like this. Would you try this? What would you change different? Do it with ground chicken for something. Do it with ground turkey would be good. Anyways, until next time, I want to go eat. Have yourself a great day, and we will see you all again next time. Bye.